You thought I couldn't do it, but I'm back to the basics. Taking off again, I'm just fixing on the spaceship. This all God's work, so it's nothing you can do. This all God's That was hip-hop artist Royal Francis, also known as Robert T. McLaughlin. Unfortunately, Robert is missing, and he's been missing for about a year at this point. His mother, Angela McLaughlin Brantley, is working very hard trying to raise exposure to his case, but she's running into some difficulty, and she's starting to wonder, is this because of race? Is this because of sex? Why aren't people reporting on my missing son? It's time for us to turn on the searchlight. It's something that we've discussed on this channel before. There are certain cases that seem to fit the profile of what major media likes to report on, and unfortunately, Robert's case does not fit that mold. I'm thankful that his mother, Angela, figured out a way to try to get some press around this uh, just by raising that question. It's one of those things that whenever I talk to families that have missing loved ones, I'm trying to help them figure out what is the hook that media will pay attention to and actually run a story on this. And Angela found a bit of that hook by talking about the fact that, yeah, you know, her, her son might be into hip hop. That doesn't mean that he's a thug. Uh, I can tell you after listening to several of his songs, this is a guy that has a pretty positive outlook. Uh, some of his lyrics actually incorporate geek culture. Uh, there's some references to his DeLorean and his plutonium. Uh, even his artwork, let me show you here on his SoundCloud page. Uh, we've got uh, the old Enterprise and the Millennium Falcon on his artwork here. Um, it's It's weird because I know... Just on the outset, there's a lot of people that would look at this picture of this guy and go, oh, look it, he's, you know, some type of gangster rapper or something like that. And that is certainly not what I found when I've looked into this case. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you that clip in particular about him talking about doing God's work. I thought that that was just a very special place to come from and to be able to share that message through his music. Uh, also, if you check him out on SoundCloud, he's got just about 50 tracks that are on here now. Uh, I saw no less than probably 20 different YouTube videos featuring him. Uh, I know that he had several local gigs that he was proud of. Um, this, this is a guy that had some things going on. He also had his challenges. He went through an accident and lost part of his memory, um, approximately a good chunk of a few weeks worth of his memory. But he came out of that, kind of rebuilt himself and continued on with his dream. Uh, as a child, he was also extremely artistic. Apparently, anything that he touched in terms of creativity, he just kind of had a natural knack for. So I'm really hoping there's something that we can do to help Angela spread the message about Robert and raise some exposure to this case, and I hope that you guys will help me do that. One of the toughest things about this case is because there's been so little coverage, we don't have much for details, but thankfully, his mother has gotten the information that she has out in a few different places. Thankfully, there's also a NamUs profile, so we've got some stuff that we can do in terms of reviewing it. But let's start with the missing poster here for Robert T. McLaughlin, age 35, missing September 24th, 2017 from Jacksonville, Florida. Five foot ten, about two hundred and ten pounds. Brown eyes, black hair. This is one of those cases, guys. He goes missing from his apartment. A lot of his personal items are left behind, and we just we have nothing to go on except that. Um, right from the poster here, Robert went missing from his apartment and was last seen around ten p.m. He took no personal belongings or his car. He has no ID or wallet with him. There are a few personal items that he actually did take with him that we're going to discuss by the end of this video. Robert has had no contact with friends or family, which is a concern for them. He has tattoos on both his forearms and a metal rod on his left arm. Uh, and it's strange because I haven't seen any description of the tattoos. And even from watching his videos, I couldn't get a very strong sense of the artwork that was on his tattoos. However, the left arm with the metal rod, he has a very long scar that is really, really noticeable. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. You can even see it in his videos, and that might be a very good indicator if you do happen to see someone who you think looks like him. Check that left arm and look for that very long scar. Um, back to the poster here. 
Uh, Robert may be wearing glasses and have a full beard. He was last seen wearing a black t-shirt and black shorts. He is a rap artist also, also known as Royal Francis or Rob Francis. Uh, I believe he is also, in some cases, called Franchise. So those are all potential aliases. If he did happen to run away from his life for some reason, he might be going under those names or some form of those names. Of course, they have contact information here. I'm going to have it in the description box below for anyone that might have information and wants to kick it in to help Angela find Robert or find what happened to her son. Uh, here's another photo of him. I pulled up a couple different photos because his look can vary a little bit. Um, and I want to make sure that you get a very good sense of what he looks like. Uh, we do see he's got kind of thin dreads. That seems to be a bit norm across all the photos that I've seen for him. Uh, and then here we have a picture of him and his mother, Angela. This is the woman that is working very, very hard and meeting some resistance that quite honestly, I, I don't understand myself, but we'll talk about that. So the name is profile gives us a little more detail. Uh, date of last contact, September 24th. We still have it Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, he would currently be 36 years old. Of course, he has missed one of his birthdays at this point. Um, for his aliases, Royal Francis, Rob Francis, um, male, black African-American. We've got the same height at five foot 10, same weight at around 210 pounds. Um, for the map, I actually pulled up my own map uh, this is the apartments that he lived at, the, the place at Capper Landing. And first of all, one of the things I'm concerned about is we can see there is a lot of brush around all this area. Um, I don't know if there has been any searches done, quite honestly, based on the information. The information in the media is so thin. I just, I don't have a whole lot to share with you guys on that. Um, but just looking at this, I would certainly be trying to organize some searches uh, around this immediate vicinity where all this green is. But on top of that, if we go to the other map, you'll see we also have a river back here. Now, I did do some Google Street Views just to try to get a sense of how big this river is or um, you know what type of currents it might have. It does not look like it is very significant, at least in terms of when this these photographs are taken. You can see uh, you know, this doesn't look like a raging river or something along those lines. But if I was going to organize some type of search in this area, I would certainly just at least walk um, this river as well, just to just to make sure that there were no signs of him there. Now, if we pull out a little bit and also drop south of the apartments, um, there is a bigger uh, part of the Trout River down here. So it might be worth doing some type of searches in there as well. But uh, basically, I'm not finding anything on that. As a matter of fact, one of the best sources of information, just in terms of learning about Robert, is a blog that has been put up by someone that actually knew him personally. So this is from ktownchris.com, October 9th, 2017. Today marks two weeks since our friend Francis was last seen, and there has been absolutely no leads to his whereabouts. Only one local news station has covered his disappearance. That is not okay. I certainly agree. It's not okay. And what do we have local stations for if they're not going to cover local news like that? I'd also be curious why uh, radio, local radio stations, particularly hip hop stations, might have not picked up on this. Um, I believe that some of the stuff he has put out has actually gotten some radio play. But even outside of that, just talking about the fact that this guy's an artist, he's local. Uh, I'm really surprised that they couldn't get some coverage on local radio in particular. He's a resident of Duval County, and everyone in and around Jacksonville should see this flyer and be on the lookout for him. Rob is a music artist here in Jax, a laid-back guy who works hard and is friendly with everyone. I personally have known him about nine years, and he is one of the nicest guys I know, never disrespectful, and always great to have a conversation with about anything from movies and music to the world we are living in. He has had the same group of close friends the entire time I've known him, and my husband and I run into him at every art walk in downtown Jack's. He grew up in Sherwood Apartments and was still currently living on the north side of Jacksonville, Florida. The weekend before he disappeared, he attended a friend's wedding where everyone says they saw him having nothing but a good time. He was last seen on Monday, September 25th at Capper Landing Apartments. He was working at Bacardi on Imason Park Boulevard through Allegiant staffing at the time of his disappearance. 
Aside from Art Walk and music studios, you can usually find Rob playing basketball, watching football, or just being around his family, friends, and loved ones. And as a matter of fact, on the last day um, before he went missing, his mom notes that also. I believe he was over at, at her house watching a football game. Uh, we've got another photo of him here. A couple more photos, uh, pretty much the same ones that I've showed you before. But what about official news on this? Let's go ahead and take a look at actionnewsjacks.com. Um, basically, this article is largely just a copy of like a press release. Um, it There's really no information that's that different from what they had on the poster that was released, which is, I think, why they actually cut off the bottom part of the poster because uh, it looks like they wanted to make it look like they actually wrote something here when there's not a whole lot that they wrote. Sorry, I know that sounded a little cynical, but I'm, I'm just being honest. Everything that's in this article is basically the bottom half of the poster that they cut off, uh, except for one thing. They did note that they have spoken to his mother, and she told them that she knew something was wrong when her when her son didn't show up for a car appointment that he had scheduled. Um but outside of that, there's just there's no other information on this article. Over at uh, news4jacks.com, we're going to get some more detail here. This is from October 3rd, 2017. Loved ones said the rapper would never turn away from his family or his music, and now they're doing everything they can to find him. They're hoping someone will recognize him in the posters with his photo that they're putting up around town. McLaughlin's mother, Angela Brantley, told news 4 Jacks, quote, I was trying to get a hold of him. I couldn't, so I tried to get a hold of some of his friends to see if they had heard from him. They said they would check to see if they could get a hold of him. The Tuesday after that, they asked me if I had heard from him because they were still not able to get a hold of him. Brantley said police searched his home, and the only items missing were his apartment key and phone. So we actually have two items, and one of those items you would think could be very critical to this investigation, phones. Uh, hopefully that means that we could ping his trail, uh, maybe see if there was Wi-Fi he was jumping on, something along those lines. But we have an unfortunate development when it comes to his phone. We're going to run a video clip from this same coverage here right now. McLaughlin's phone service was cut off because of late payments. When we had the phone service turned back on to see if maybe the phone was dead, he'll turn it back on and try to make a call or something like that. But none of that has happened. So unfortunately, with the service kicked off, um, we're not going to have any of the information that we would hope to in terms of tracking his movements. Uh, I do think it was a really good idea for his mother to kick the service back on just to see if that phone got turned on at any point, not even by him necessarily, but what if it got turned on by someone else? What if it wound up in a pawn shop or something along those lines? Um, but unfortunately, it looks like nothing came up from turning the phone back on as well. Uh, continuing with the article, the mother also said her son has a show coming up in Savannah. She said he would never miss it and she hopes she can still see him perform. I would just want to hold him and let him know everything is going to be okay, Brantley said. Brantley said her fear is that someone took him against his will, but for now, she's praying he'll be back home soon. And I just want to thank uh, news4jacks.com uh, for doing real coverage of this case, for actually talking to Angela, getting some details, sharing those details publicly, also doing the video segment that they did on this, um, that is what I would expect from local media. And I'm really happy that someone at least stepped up and tried to help with this case. Uh, over at firstcoastnews.com, mother fears her son's missing person case is not being taken seriously after a year without answers. And this was published just on September 27th, 2018. Uh, this is also the article that basically motivated me to cover this case. On average, missing persons detectives investigate over 1,200 cases per year in Duval County, and in any given year, less than 10 reports involve foul play, according to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Now, I just want to stop at that point because something that came up on Brain Scratch last week, where we had two missing persons detectives working 4,000 cases per year, uh, is being echoed in this part of the country as well. We've got, on average, these detectives investigating over 1,200 cases per year, specifically for this county. Um, that is just, 
I, I can't believe the numbers that are thrown at them in terms of trying to handle this task. And it really makes me wonder if we're allocating enough resources to these types of investigations. Um, I don't know. It just these numbers are, are staggering to me. Like I said in Brain Scratch last week, I, I couldn't cover that many cases. Just trying to do a review here on YouTube and trying to learn enough about that case to share it with you guys uh, would exceed the amount of time that these detectives are being given to handle that number. It just it, it boggles my mind that that's what they're up against. Uh, Angela McLaughlin Brantley doesn't want her son to become another statistic. Desperate to find her son, Robert McLaughlin, she fears his case isn't being taken seriously enough by investigations. Uh, Brantley says detectives have stopped answering her calls about the case. Now, despite the fact that I'm, I'm totally acknowledging, it seems to me that we have a problem where uh, missing persons investigators are dealing with just a sheer numbers problem. It is just far too many cases for how many detectives are actually assigned to those divisions. That's that's something uh, I'm going to have to look into more. But just from the last couple cases where I've actually seen some numbers on this, it seems like there is a big problem there. But when we're talking about something as simple as just returning a call, um, I really struggle with that. And that, that's part of why I keep talking about this on this channel. There has to be a better way for maintaining communication with the families. And this is a prime and perfect example of where that is really going wrong. Uh, if you go for a matter of months without hearing back from your missing persons investigator, I think that's a problem. What would it take to pick up the phone place that phone call and say, you know what? No tips have come in in the past three months. We're still waiting for more information so we can act on it. I mean, literally, that's all they would have to say. It doesn't have to be a conversation that goes on for an hour. Uh, and the more you keep up with those people, the shorter the conversation is going to be anyway. So there's something in me that's telling me... Um, there, there has to be a better way of doing this. Even if there's like a case manager, someone that's like a go-between between, between the actual investigators and the family, someone that can make it easier for the investigators. Maybe it's tough for them to pick up that phone and say, you know what, I got to call this mom back. I got to tell her that there's been no movement on her son's case. Uh, I know that that kind of phone call can be very, very tough. So maybe there has to be someone else that handles that. Almost like uh, almost like someone you'd consider to be a media relations person, but pull that out of media and just make it a relations officer, someone that just is responsible for keeping up with the family and can be a go-between between, between the family and the actual investigators, uh, free them up so they have more time for placing the phone calls they need to place about you know questioning people or driving to locations or doing those kind of things. Um, but then this officer can meet up with them and get a five minute update on, hey, have we had any updates on this case? And let me let me just call that mom back and let her know. Something's broken here with it and it, it just bothers me because um, I speak to so many of these families. I was literally on the phone yesterday with a mother on a case that I've covered previously going through the same exact thing. It's been three months since she spoke to the investigator assigned to her son's case. Uh, he had just left my house after watching the Jaguars game and was going to play basketball with his friend Sunday night, said Brantley. She's been trying to get an update from the case detective to no avail. It's been months, several months ago, she said. She fears he's been categorized and stereotyped and set aside. Just because someone has braids and tattoos and likes rap music, she said, that does not make them be in the category of someone who is in the thuggish life. Angela, I completely agree with you, and I'll actually take it one further than that. Even if they are in the thuggish life, don't they still deserve it? And more importantly, don't their families deserve to have a real good effort going on for trying to find them? Um, I hope that that's, there's something in me that hopes that that's not what's really going on here, but I can't say for sure. I don't know this this instance as personally as you do because you're the one that's actually interfaced with these investigators. You're the one that's reaching out to them. So, um, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'd take it even one further. Even if they are a thug, they have people that love them and those people deserve answers if they go missing as well. 
Uh, it's hard because he is a dependable person. He always kept you uplifted and laughing, said Brantley. The unknown is the problem. It's the bother. It's unfair. It's just unfair. I have spoken to a lot of people at this point um, that completely sympathize and understand where you're at, Angela. I've spoken to many mothers that have missing children. And uh, yeah, I think all of them would literally agree with you that the not knowing is the hardest part. It's actually harder than even knowing that your loved one might not be with us anymore. Um, and you and the family deserve answers. You, you deserve to know where Robert is and what's happened to him. But believe it or not, brain scratchers, it's not just Angela that can't get a call back. The bottom of this article, First Coast News reached out to Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We are still waiting to hear back. So in this case, even the media isn't hearing back on this case as well. Uh, jumping over, this is the Facebook page, Find Robert McLaughlin. Uh, I'll have a link to this, of course, in the description box down below uh, so you can help support the efforts here. This is a message that was written by Angela. I wanted to share it with you guys because it gives us a little more insight into what's going on here. Robert has never been a problem child in school or the real world. Always dependable, caring, educated, sensible, intelligent, and helpful. He is willing to help where he can. Robert would not have just walked away from everything that he loves. He is obsessed with his music. He desired to have a child. Robert was involved in a major accident in 2014 that caused him a brain injury, but by the grace of God, he came through it. Music and memory came back. Uh, and then right after that, it does say that about six weeks of his memory from right around the time of the accident have not fully come back. But uh, please, if you have a heart, come forward with information to help us find him. He has a family that is aching for his return. I, his mother, have been functioning in a numb state, trying to contain feelings of disgust from police department and his so-called friends or friendships. I don't believe that a person can disappear with no trace. The technology these days should have revealed something, anything. Uh, there was also a GoFundMe that was running to try to help this case. Unfortunately, it's closed, which I'm kind of bummed about because I would really like to donate to this case uh, to make sure they can keep getting flyers, keep putting them up, um, just keep that awareness raised in the local area. There is also a Web Sleuths thread, but it's literally one page. Uh, and basically referring to the few articles that have come out about this case. So this is where I turn it over to you, Brain Scratchers. And I know this is a tough one because we really don't have a whole lot to go on. Um, we've kind of heard some stories similar to this before. A uh, person goes missing from their home, leaves most of their items behind. Uh, this one's a little bit different, though, because he took his phone with him. Of course, he might have known that his phone was not active at the time if you know he hadn't paid the bill and it got disconnected. But even if we try to go down the, the potential options here, uh, if there was something where he was depressed and for some reason he didn't want to live any longer, why is he going to take a phone? Why is he going to take that phone that isn't working? Why is he going to take a key for his apartment if he's not planning on coming back? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so it's it's strange to me because the actions that we're hearing sure sound to me like um, possibly he was going to go out and play basketball. And then if that is where he was truly headed to, um, I'd be very curious to hear from some of his friends to see some of them comment on what's going on with this potential case. Um, did they did they see him? Did he ever show up? When did they become concerned? What did they do? Who did they try to call? There is a lot more to this story that unfortunately we just don't have the details to. Uh, his mother's note on that Facebook post gives me a little hint that not only is she frustrated with the investigators, but she's also frustrated with his so-called friends. So it could seem like maybe there's some questions that she can't get really answered from his friends as well. Um, I don't know. There's just there's so many different aspects to this case. Uh, I, I believe if I was in Angela's shoes, I would be worried about the same thing, that there's some kind of foul play element that is going on here. Uh, from everything else that I've seen about this guy, you know, we've heard from someone that was a friend of his. We can see that he was at least creating regularly in terms of the art that he really loved. Uh, 
I don't know. It, it just it seems like somehow he got stopped, and I don't know what stopped him. And I'm hoping that we can raise awareness to to help answer that. So if you have friends that live in the Jacksonville, Florida area, please share this video with them. Let's try to raise exposure to this case. There's a very good chance they might not know about this case at all. So let's do our best to try to focus on that area and share this picture, try to make sure more people know about Robert and are looking for him. And Angela, I'd also like to put the um, opportunity out there if you would like to come on the channel to answer some questions. I did start a list of questions about this case already. Uh, we could certainly line something up, a phone call or a Skype call or something like that. You can email me at john, J-O-H-N, at lordandarts.com. Lord and Arts, just like it's spelled in the channel name down below. So... Just know that there's a lot of people out here that care about you and care about Robert, and we want to see an outcome to all of this. Good, bad, whatever. We want to help find the answers and bring the truth to you on this. Thank you guys for caring about these cases like I do. I can't do this without you. You're such an important part of this. So thank you for being there. Thank you for listening. I hope you all stay safe, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you back here on Friday with a brand new Brain Scratch.